Hello everybody, this is Life in the Spirit. I'm Craig Miller and I'm sitting here with Lynn Furrow and we're gonna be discussing several things today. Joe is not with us today, he's on vacation. So you did well, Joe, going on vacation with your family. Have a great time and we'll see you when you get back. And then our other person that we usually have down here, David Furrow, is not with us as well. He's doing our tech with the cameras today, so we miss him as well, and he'll be back with us in our next episode, hopefully. Lynn? So you're stuck with me, is what you're saying. <laughs> so, so Lynn, I'm, I'm stuck with you, but you know, here's a couple things that I've been pondering and thinking about. And you know, I, I know that we want to get into John 5, 17, and you know, go back there and capture that, but all the things that have been happening uh, within our country and within the world, um, prophetically, my ears are up and listening to what's going on. And I know that we are really in a prophetic time. And so I'm, I'm going to ask uh, your thoughts. And I know we talked a little bit earlier um, about the world events and what that could mean, uh, not only for us, but for the church, the body, and our nation. And I know that you have a couple thoughts on that, so I'd like you to expound on that a little bit. Well, again, thank you for allowing me to fill in. Uh, it's tough to uh, come in when Joe is not here and David. These are tough shoes to fill, but <laughs> I'll do the best I can. We appreciate that. As I say, I'll do the best I can with what's left. Um, I think, Craig, when you said, you know, you're leaning in to hear the heart of the Lord, the most often repeated phrase in the New Testament, and it's also repeated in the book of Revelation, and it was stated by the Lord Jesus, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. And the, the word let means you will be permitted to hear. If you set your heart to hear, uh, he is not wanting to hide what he's doing and what he's saying. Those people will be permitted to hear. But this is not about being a casual listener. This is about a, a heart that is learned to incline uh, to hear with great focus, with great intention and, and purpose. And I think that the church has been uh, casual listeners to the Lord. Um, we have become somewhat bored of listening. So as, as a pastor, as a leader, and, and I know, you know, you preach and teach as well, that sometimes when you stand up before a group of believers and you're trying to open up the Word of God and declare it, you can almost see that there's a spirit of slumber that comes over the people of God, that they've heard it so many times that they think that there's nothing else to know uh, in regards to God's voice. But a couple of weeks ago, I shared uh, out of Romans 10, and in Romans 10, it says, faith comes by hearing. Now, we know Paul didn't stop there because then he shares where uh, hearing comes from. Hearing comes from hearing the, the Word of God. It's the Word of God that produces spiritual sight, spiritual he hearing that leads to the birth of faith. And so we cannot allow a spirit of slumber, uh, spiritual passivity and lethargy. Uh, we have to fight against it and we have to uh, incline our ears to hear and rehear and hear and rehear. And what I said a couple of weeks ago is that when, when we put the Word of God first place in our life, then it allows God, and we know what God has said through Scripture, it prepares us to be able to perceive and to hear what the Lord is saying with the preceding words, proceeding words, that are words in the now, rhema words, where he's speaking to us in real time. So I think it's, it's vitally important that people wake up out of their slumber, out of their sleep. And I know that there's been a lot of admonition, even in life and the spirit. You guys talking about that. It's time for the church 
to arise, to awaken, and uh, to shake off its complacency and passivity. But it is time for the church to sharpen its hearing because, as you said, in the world and in our nation, there are rapidly unfolding events that for many people, this is going to be a, a time of great fear and even terror, fear at a level where it will terrorize them of the things that they see happening in the earth. Yeah, you know, you say that about all the world events and people in fear. You know, we look at that. Um, if you're just out there, sitting out there and not hearing what God has to say, that fear can overtake you. Yeah. And, you know, for me, these things that we're seeing, those these things that God is speaking to us, it's more of, of an excitement because God is doing, for lack of a better word, his thing. Mm -hmm. he's, he's doing the work that needs to be done here on earth to cause those out there to hear what he has to say. Because where do you, where do you turn to? If you aren't listening to the Lord and what he has to say to us, what are we listening to? Yeah. And then we get comfortable and we get back in the same box and all we do is sit in a chair. And then he says that that day will overtake you like a thief. And, and um, in one moment of my life, I did have somebody, uh, they, it was an accidental break-in. He was intoxicated, and I forgot to lock my door at night. Mm -hmm. But it was a disturbing event when I had a drunk stagger into my bedroom in the middle of the night and him opened my closet door, and obviously he was so intoxicated, he thought that he was in his house. And I kept a loaded shotgun under my bed, and I got my shotgun, I stood up, I had it pointed at him, and I said, who are you and what are you doing here? And I, he answered me with slurred speech and stumbled back, and, and talking about, something that I didn't think happened. When I went to bed that night, I didn't think that I was going to have someone strange in my bedroom bust through my door and talking about alarm, talking about, you know, adrenaline and my heart racing and it being a sudden event that overtook me. And if you don't have the God speaking to you in real time, producing a faith where we're not losing hope, but we understand this is God working his purpose in the world, setting the stage to bring about the consummation of the age, then it is a fearful thing. When you don't know the end of the story, if you haven't read the back of the book, then you're left to prognosticate what is going to happen to us. But when we know the word and we have the confirming word of the Spirit of God speaking to us, strengthening us, comforting us in moments of trauma, pain, and disruption and uncertainty, um, you know, when you have God speaking in the middle of the mess, you have an anchor and it's an anchor that holds. Yeah. You know, I was also thinking, you know, about where we've come from. You know, when I was a young adult and, you know, what we were in at that time, you know, and that movement that was going on and the healings that were taking place. And it seems like, you know, now we're actually moving and getting back more into the prophetic. And so I was thinking, is this a generational thing or is this thing a, a cycle like every 10 years? I know that you and I had talked about it and the prophetic words, you know, we went back, you know, almost 30 years mm -hmm on a prophetic word that was spoken over uh, this body here at Adoration Church. And, you know, those words are now coming to pass. We're seeing them coming to pass. And it's, it's, it's just critical that we are reminded and we remember mm -hmm. the words that are spoken even then. Which brings me, you know, to what we had talked about earlier. Yeah. And I know that this is one of the things that you want to share on is John Paul Jackson in the perfect storm. Yeah. And I agree with you that uh, you see generational cycles where there will be a move of God, the result of that move, and then people forget about, it's, it's like we fall asleep in the promised land. Yeah. 
um, and, and we take God's blessings and the fruit and result of God's blessing and, and a move of God and revival and renewal and restoration, uh, you can see that happen with Israel time and time again. Time and and time. then uh, the blessing would reach an end, you know, the residual of it would reach an end, and they were left with the absence of blessing. Their lifestyle turned away from the Lord. They sought idols. God had to discipline them. And when God started disciplining them, they cried out for mercy. God responded. A new cycle of renewal and restoration occurred. And we are in one of these generational cycles where God is shaking everything that can be shaken. He is disciplining and refining his church, disciplining the nations, but he's positioning us for another great outpouring. So discipline isn't bad. No, no. It, it should be welcomed by us. The tragedy is that God's word should be yes. what disciplines us. We should listen to instruction and obey, but when we reject his instruction, he's left to use circumstances that put us into a place of, of constraint and limitation, and we don't like the discomfort of it when he begins to use circumstances to limit our options and, and restrict our disobedience, and he brings us to a place of, again, face-to-face. Okay, son, I'm not doing this because I despise you. I, I'm doing this because I love you. I'm going to grab your attention, and I need you to follow my voice and, because I want to do something in your life to change and transform you. And, and so right now, there is a time of awakening in the church, but God, in this awakening, it's not because I think that we've been so obedient. It's because... He is correcting our disobedience yes. using circumstances, external things to begin to prepare the church to once again yield our will to his lordship and be positioned then. Because I said uh, a few weeks ago, the, the church is the only hope because Christ is in us, the hope of glory. But the world doesn't have any hope. It's not going to be in our economic systems, That's politics, right. none of those things. And I never got to John Paul Jackson. But, but Well, before we do that, I just mm -hmm. I want to ask you one question. Just because I know that you and I had talked about this earlier. And, you know, we're, we talk about, um, you know, with Russia and the Ukraine over there and Zelensky, you know, doing his thing as a president uh, uh, in Ukraine. And what prophetically does that mean or, or what do you see? I remember you asking me that question mm -hmm. and I said to me, you know, when I look at that and, and I, I'm being pretty forward with this, I said, I'm not sure that maybe I heard this from the Lord, but I really felt that we have taken ground and I appreciate what Zelensky said. He said, you know, we're not going to give back without a fight. And we're going to continue to fight until we can't anymore. Mm -hmm. And I know that then you said, yes, it's that David and Goliath scenario mm -hmm. that, that we're seeing. Because, yes, there's devastation on both sides. We might not even see politically and agree with them in their political views. But it is a thing that God speaks to us prophetically through circumstance that allows us to even go deeper with what God is showing us. And I think that ties in to John Paul Jackson, what he shared, I think you said in 19... It was in uh, 2008, 2008. That's right. All the way back to 2008. And going back to Russia and Ukraine, uh, there is a, a prophetic pattern and principle that yeah. we need to look at in this scenario. Scripture teaches us that that which is natural comes first than that which is spiritual. In other words, God uses things in the natural to be object lessons yes. for those that aren't spiritually discerning. So, so God can say, uh, you know, I'm going to give all of creation as illustrations of my glory. Now, the revelation of Jesus being God in the flesh is the most supreme revelation yes. and specific revelation, special revelation. The word of God is special revelation. 
but there's general revelation. And God uses all creation, but God uses the events of human history to be object lessons of what he intends to do in the spirit. Yes. So you said it right. It is a, a David and Goliath scenario that one of the greatest military powers that exist on the human planet is going to go through a period of humiliation and God is going to use a David to slay a giant and, and we're going to see a giant fall. Um, Dutch Sheets wrote a book a number of years ago, Giants Will Fall or Shall Fall. Shall fall yeah. and, and we have been waiting in the church. We're talking about major powers that have ruled nations, principalities that have had control over geographic areas. God is going to displace them. And when they are displaced and the strong man is bound, his house is going to be spoiled. It's going to lead to the harvest of millions, millions. of people in yeah. the nations of the earth. That's exciting. And what's going to happen in Asia and in Eastern Europe is God is going to, this is going to result, this giant falling, this principality and power being displaced you're going to see a major spiritual harvest and acceleration. Yeah. And it'll come out of the ashes of this war. And, and you say, but what if Vladimir Putin takes over the capital of Kiev? Is it all over? You need to understand that you can win a battle, but still lose the war That's ultimately. Right. And so this is going to be a scenario where we're going to see the breaking of a giant and and God's going to use a, a Goliath or a, a David to slay, slay a Goliath. So good. So good. Do you want to do the next episode on things with John Paul Jackson? We certainly can. I see that we've... <laughs> we, we've gone on quite a bit. We have. Okay. So thank you for joining us in this episode of Life in the Spirit. And we will be back again. And we will get to John Paul Jackson and the perfect storm. Thank you and God bless.